good to be here this evening. Yes. And to be celebrating in 64 years is definitely All good right. to be here. Yes, because that's what we need. Yes. And I just want to let you know, City Bro, welcome you and thank you. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you. We thank you this afternoon for another day. Yes, yes, yes. Father God, we thank you. Yes, yes. We thank you right now yes. for all of your loving kindness, yes. for all of your tender mercies. Yes. Father God, we thank you because you. you've been mighty good, mighty good, yes. mighty good yes. to us. Yes. We thank you continuously because, Lord, as you've been good to us, you didn't suffer what the enemy had as a snare, as a trap for us. You rebuked the devourer for our sakes. And for that again, God, we say thank you. Thank you for the dawn of this day. You woke us up this morning early, closer than our right minds, and you gave us health, you gave us strength, the portions of it that we have. We yet again say thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for strength. Thank you for the good. Thank you for the bad. Thank you for the ups. Thank you for the downs. Lord, we thank you for the trials, even the pitfalls, because as Andre's song, he painted through it all. It was all through all of those things that we learned how to trust in Jesus. We learned how to trust in God. Through it all, we learned how to lean and depend. Yes. On your word. Thank you, Master, for being a merciful God. Thank you, Master, for being a just God. But most of all, thank you for being just God to us. Yes. Yes. Thank you for being God to us that none other could ever be. We have so many things. We have so much to give your name the glory, yes. honor, and praise for. Yes. But, Master, we most certainly are here with hearts of thanksgiving and mouths filled with praise as we are here celebrating oh God this monumental, this extravagant, this monumental feat oh God, celebrating 64 years of worship, 64 years of servitude 64 years of following you, 64 years of being obedient to your word, 64 years of the trials that come along with ministry, 64 years that we heard your voice and 64 years that these walls are yet standing 64 years that you've been faithful to see the world Lord we thank you today we have so much to be thankful for you've kept the doors open we thank you you've kept the doors open we thank you you've kept the doors open we thank you Your blessed name we pray. 
and ask it all in every heart that agrees with this prayer. Let God know you agree with this prayer. Shout amen. Shout amen one more time. Put your hands together and give God a praise. Amen.
that wonderful selection. I needed that one right now. Right now, I needed it right now. Right now. Avenue. 
including selling off the previous location and using money obtained to pay down the mortgage on the new location. While many improvements to the church have been done throughout the years, there are many more improvements to be done. In February 15, 1976, the church laid a cornerstone to memorize those who came before and their accomplishments. God had blessed you to grow in pastors that were, that were men of faith. Reverend A.T. William Sr., Reverend A.T. William Jr., Ella Ray Barkin Sr., Bishop McLeod M. Barter Sr., reorganized pastor, Pastor Denon William Sr., and our current overseer, Reverend Jonathan Moses Sr. While many, many who were present with Cedar Road in the beginning, have answered the Lord's call and joined the Lord in heaven. <coughs> we can never forget the original members who began this work, great work, walking in unity and by faith. We must never forget our history. See the road back and forth and walking by faith and not by sight. All right. We are moving forward in unity and love. Mm -hmm. The future of Cedar Road is bright. We continue to honor those members who laid the foundation from which Cedar Road was built. While the members continue to work hard in preserving Cedar Grove history, sacrificing their time and contribution to help serve in our church and community. Thank you. Amen. And we have had a struggle. Yes, but Lord. you know God is good. Yes, and He take you right on through the struggle. Yes. He take you on through the storm and the rain. Yes. And that's where we've been. Yes. But I can tell you today that we are on the battlefield and we're going to keep on working. Right. Because we know God is yes. And we're going to be here. Yes. I can tell you the Lord is going to keep us. Keep even us. though some left and talked about us and all that, but that's okay. Yes. Because yes. you know what God heard? Yes. And He let us
said every praise is to our God. They said glory, hallelujah, is to our God. And they backed it up one more way. They said every praise, every praise is to our God. How many came with a praise in this spirit? Just keep on giving because it's really true. You can't. You just can't be God giving no matter how hard you try. We're here to amen lift offering amen in this time of this service, this time of fellowship. And amen. If, if we had the opportunity, boy, that's a nice number, amen. amen. That's a nice number, Mama 64. Amen. And you know, just for the blessing's sake, you know, to just get the extra, the extra blessing, just round it off and make it 65. Amen. amen. Now, ain't nobody talking to me, but that's just in my spirit. Amen. I mean, they showed up at least those that can and those that would, and especially those that's a part of, uh, I know the, the faithful few, amen, but see, that's a milestone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a milestone. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Whatever you can do, though, I'm going to do my best. Just say they never do your best. Yeah. But that's a nice number. Amen. Yeah. Looking out there and all the adults I'm looking at with pocketbooks and purses and wallets. <laughs> That would be a poor oh, mama, that would be an awful number, boy. You'd be happy, wouldn't you? You couldn't contain mama going to pay for going home to that cash. She'd be shouting in the car. <laughs> Bless God. But amen. Come on, come, uh, uh, ushers or those that are going to um, 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 have themselves go to the trays for the offering. We're going to come and we want to do our best. Amen. We want to do our best, amen. The thing I realized and I found out about, about giving, the blessing to giving is, you already know as that song says, you can't be God, so don't, you don't even try to do that. But the, the word says, upon the first day of the week, let every man lay by him in store that which God has prospered him. So here's the ticket. You know you're coming to church already. You know you come to church already. Yeah. You know three of these things is going to happen. You're going to pray. 
they going to sing four things. He going to preach and he going to give an offer. Why not come already ready to just do all four the right way? Amen. He said, I'm saying that because he said, give not grudgingly nor of necessity. For why God loves a cheerful giver. Yes, yes. So we just ask that you do our best. They do your best. Amen. And help us in the celebration tonight. Yes. Amen. There, God has some things in store for the Cedar Grove Church. And, yes, yes, amen. Yes. And we just want to do our part. Amen. Yes. We want to do our part. So as we prepare to give, I'm going to ask it this way. That first thought you said, that first idea that you had in your mind, well, I got this little three dollars, one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. That's nice, but maybe double it. That's closer to ten. Can I get a witness? And if you look in that same water a little bit closer, you get about four more, you can make that ten be reality. Amen. That'll just be deep. That'll be, that'll be how you get your blessing. Amen. Don't let, don't let the devil rob you of your blessing. Amen. That little money that you can't wait to get out of church with to go to uh, uh, Diddy's or, you know. Amen. Give, give a piece of it to God and offer. I promise you he'll bless you. Amen. Father, we love you today. We thank you for your goodness and your loving kindness and all of your tender mercies. Father God, as we're here now to lift this offering, oh God, we, we come, Lord, asking that you would bless the gifts and the givers. Lord, those that have it to give, we pray even now that before they come and get about their seat, before they come down to this offering tray, that you would touch their hearts. Lord, let them give, oh God, to the uh, to the furtherance of the building of the kingdom, your kingdom here over here on this corner, oh God. Let them give, oh God, uh, uh, not sparingly. Let them not give, oh God, reluctantly. Let them not clear. Live, oh God, uh, hesitantly. But Lord, let them give unto you with joyfulness, with gladness in their heart. Let them, oh God, give unto you as you will give back to them. You promised it. You said in your word that you would open the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. And you would pour us out blessings that we would not have room enough to receive. Bless these gifts now. Bless the givers. Bless, oh God, now let a pantry go empty. Now let a plate go bare. Now let a refrigerator go empty, oh God, for being a, 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 a dutiful disciple to this time of offertory to you and then we pray for the one that have not to give the one that has not to give I pray oh God that even, even in obedience in the act of obedience that they come around and pass the offer tray Lord they touch it in obedience I pray that you would speak only as you can and touch them oh God in a divine way I pray that you would give abundance to even them for their obedience unto you. Don't let them go home and not let this week go by without blessing them in a supernatural way for the simple act of obedience. We love you now. We thank you. It's in your precious name we pray. Everyone say amen. amen. In the hands of the ushers.
Salutation to not only Cedar Grove as we did this morning, but also to, uh, amen, our sister in church that's here to fellowship with us, amen. The, let me say it right, because you know, my brother, the Lord, that elevated him now. His church ain't got one name, it got two, amen. Yeah. Amen. He done got bigger than his brother now, just about, amen. I can't say the one name, it's two names now, and it's, it's, it's St. Rest Fellow Friendship. All right, I have it right. Second best friendship. Amen. Let's give God a hand. Amen. Amen. See, a real perfect love, a real perfect love can, can, can have, have love for you that God has to elevate you, not hate on you. Amen. 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 That's what real fellowship, real brotherhood is about. Amen. We ain't mad. We ain't mad. Amen. 
See, well, while you fooling around getting funny under the color, hot collar, the Titan, your back bent and whatnot, and all that jaw poked out, man, because he Lord done blessed him. That's why he ain't blessed you. Hallelujah. You don't know how to praise for another one. If you praise for another one, your blessing might be around the corner. Hey. Hey. This is the very, very first time that he's been in the position of pastorage. Um, I've been in occasion of bringing him up as a preacher, but this is the very first time that I've had this opportunity to bring my brother, introduce my brother on today. And it's the best way. Amen. Because, amen. He is a true man of God. I've seen this young man grow up. I've seen him literally grow up. As a young man that's in the church, amen, there were those that laughed at him at times because he was peculiar. He was peculiar. He was different. Peculiar means just that. Not the same. And that's what he was. Both laughed at him, joked at him a whole lot. But God had him. Yes, yes, yes. And God had him to be different. God had him. That's why he was peculiar. He didn't roll it all with every crowd. I'm telling you, he didn't. I ain't saying that just because he's my brother. He did not. Now, some of it was because his mama said, get this car to it. He remember that. But God kept him yes, yes, yes. because he knew that he was going to bestow upon him yes. the all-important task of being a shepherd to the flock of God. Yes, 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 yes. And I can say truly, not just biasly as his brother and as his friend, but I have seen God mature him. Yes, yes. I've seen God mature Pastor Kyle. And see, while you're in that journey of becoming mature, you gotta, you know, you gotta do some stuff that other folk won't understand. Yes, 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 yes. You're gonna, gonna go down some avenues and corridors that some people might think you're smelling a feel of yourself. And, and if you are, you might you might be for so for a reason, but you have a reason to. Yes. In some regard, because if you ain't got no pride in yourself, we're going to have pride in you. Come back to me, y'all. You don't want to be led by a man that ain't got no pride in himself. Can I get a witness? Let me go on and say this before me. He, he's, in the, he's, in the, he's, in the, he's in heaven now. But Bishop Shaw was the show that wasn't no man that didn't have no pride. As a man, he's a man that uh, has been touched by God. Yes, yes. He's been touched by God to serve God's people for such a time as this. He is the proud pastor of the St. Rest Missionary Baptist Church. Likewise, he is the proud pastor of the Friendly Friendship. Isn't that what it was originally? What it was? Primitive, the friendship primitive missionary Baptist church but God is so fixed for him to merge the two amen God is so fit for him to merge the two and they're working together in glorious harmony amen and that just depicts what the word talks about in Acts chapter 2 where we was at this morning right before it in chapter 1 but that's how God blesses the church so a few things have to happen then we're going to turn it over to him but a few things have to have to happen if you really want your church to be blessed Acts chapter 2 said that first church that God did that wild thing in he said that they had one accord they fellowship from house to house by breaking a bread. That means nobody is tripping off of somebody coming over their house to, you know, for, for a salad tea or something. You know, the missionaries didn't get funny because the ushers wanted to come and have a salad tea. Amen. They had all things in common, the word says. And because they did, God did something grand in that church. It ain't no other church got it yet. Amen. Ain't that stuff you talking about the first man in the church? The Bible says, and God added to the church daily 
such as would be saved. Now, daily mean to me every day. Can I get a witness? Now, just imagine if we was on that level, amen, in 365 days, God bless somebody coming in or somebody's coming into, amen, our churches. We'd be, all, we'd be more than all right, wouldn't we? Hallelujah. But we are grateful, amen, that this young man is standing on the wall and he's proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I am so proud of him. Again, as I said, I've seen his growth as a man, but I've seen his growth as a man of God. And he's one that truly can preach the word. Amen. He can preach the word. He's going to show us that he's going to share with us in a minute. Amen. But it is my pleasure to introduce to some and to all of us tonight, and but also to present to others, my friend, my little brother. Amen. Literally, amen, my little brother, the pastor of the, amen, French, uh, uh, St. Rest Friendship Baptist Church, amen, the person of Pastor Tory Collins, we're going to elevate our hands, amen, we're going to elevate our hands as he comes, amen, and say, Pastor Collins, preach the word, Pastor Collins, let God use you, and let God have his way, Pastor Collins. So much for your goodness, for your mercy, yeah. for your grace. Yes, yes. And thank you for these moments. Thank you for this church. Yeah. The, the rich history that it has. We are grateful. Thank you all. We're grateful for yes. uh, what you're doing right now. Yes. And what we stand and anticipate to come. Yeah. We believe you for your power, for your promise, and for your provision. And these blessings we ask now, visit us, give us um, preaching, preaching privilege, yes, yes. And preaching power, and yes. preaching passion. And in Jesus' name we pray, thank you, and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. You may be seated in the house of God and in the presence of God. Amen. Thank you so much uh, to Bishop Darby. Amen. Bishop Fred Darby. Amen. Give my friend and brother a uh, big brother for many years. Many years. Amen. We go way back and I'm just so happy to see him and his lovely wife. Who, who go, who we go way back as well. Amen. And good to see you, Mom Darby. Amen. To this church, amen. Thank you so much uh, for the invitation. Amen, Mom. Thank you so much. Amen. So much for the invitation to the St. Rest Friendship Church. Well, we got revival coming up, so everybody wasn't able to be here. For those who are here, just lift your hand. Thank you so much for being here. Amen. Amen. Uh, a good message don't have to be long. Amen. And a bad message shouldn't be long. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, Exodus, Exodus chapter 15. Let's, let me borrow your, borrow your attention just for a little while. Amen. Exodus 15. And a couple of carved concepts I would like to carve out of this text. Verse 22. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. And they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Morah, they could not drink of the waters of Morah. For the way were bitter, therefore the name of it was called Morah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. But there he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them, and said, Thou wilt diligently Listen to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, 
and will give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes. Uh, put none of the diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And they came to Edom, where there were twelve wells of water, and three score and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. I just want to talk about for a little while uh, when bitter moments are made sweet. When bitter moments are made sweet. The grass wither, the flower fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. When better moments are made sweet, what do you do um, when you find yourself uh, coming out of one situation? Only to find out as soon as you come out of this situation, you find yourself right back into another situation. Um, it, it, when you just as soon as God picks you up out of one mess, it look, it occasionally it looks as if now you're back into the same mess that God has brought you out of. Right. Here, um, last Sunday we talked about uh, how God changed chapters in our life. But here, in this particular text, we see here that not only does God change chapters, but God also changed verses. Right. Because if you look at the text, you'll see that uh, Israel and Moses was just got done celebrating a victory. All right. Amen. Amen. God called Moses yeah. and God visited Moses on the back side of the desert. Nobody was paying Moses attention. No. Uh, he was minding his own business. Uh -huh. He was working in the back of the scene. And yet God saw him there. Would suggest to me that that, that you don't always uh, have to put yourself in the limelight. You, know? you, you don't always have to uh, rush for the mountaintop because people that rush for the mountaintop is a sign that they're not prepared to be on the mountain. Amen. All sometimes all you have to do is just do what you do. Amen. And God will see you there. I get a witness in here and yes, he saw Moses on the back side of the desert and he called Moses and he he told Moses, he said Moses, he called Moses and he grabbed the attention of Moses by putting on fire something insignificant. Right. Gotta catch that going home. Something very insignificant, yeah, something yeah. that you and I wouldn't get excited of, something that you and I walk past every day. God put that on fire. Yeah, yeah. And he got the attention of Moses. God saw a bush and he put that bush on fire where the bush was burning, but it wouldn't burn up. Can I get a witness in here? Yes, uh, which lets us know that God has a way of taking insignificant things. Yes. Things that we don't pay attention to. Things that are not important to us. Things that we walk past. Things that we ignore. God got a way of taking those insignificant things. Oh yeah, yeah. uh, God. And putting them on fire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, amen. Y'all are shut with me right here because all of us in here is a testimony of that bush because we are insignificant. People didn't see the best in us, but the worst in us, they walked past us. It looked like our, our shape, our case was hopeless, but God took us and he put us on fire. And I get a witness in there and somebody ought to be able to say, I've been burning. Ever since. Oh God. So he puts the bush on fire and he grabs the attention of Moses and Moses shows up and God said, Moses, take off your shoes. Oh God, why? Because you're not standing on your ground no more. You're standing on heaven's real estate property. 
I went to sit here. He says, take off your shoes. And I wish I could pause right here because, amen, the tragedy in church, the problem in church today that we want to come to church, we want to come on God's ground, and we want to do anything. Uh, get a witness in the wall. We want to act in a proper way. We want to say what we want to say. And there comes a time when, when you show up on the Lord's house, and when you show up on the Lord's campus, when you show up at worship, there are some things you must take off. And I get a witness in here. And you, 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 you can't, you can't keep on self and still uh, visit the beauty of holiness. Uh, you got to take off self. You got to take off your own traditions. You got to take off, uh, amen, your own opinion, your exegesis. You got to, your eisegesis. You got to take off certain mannerisms. You got to take off certain attitudes. You got to take off certain ways. Why? Because you are standing on holy ground and everything can go on on God's holy ground. Can, can I get a witness in here? We're living in a time now that there's a lot of pity going on on holy ground, but there should be praise going on on holy ground. There should be worship going on on holy ground. There should be the word of God going on on the holy ground. It should be the truth of God going on on holy ground. There comes a time that there are some stuff that you and I must take off because we're not standing on our own property. We're standing on a holy ground. And I know I'm in the text because I got biblical back up. Jesus said it is written that my house should be called a house of prayer. But you have made it something else. Can I get a witness in here? And not only this, Jesus also said upon this rock I build who? Uh, not the deacon church, not the trustee church, but he said upon this rock I build church. Look at somebody and tell them they belong to the Lord. Can I get a witness in here? It belongs to the Lord. Amen. Amen. It belongs to the Lord. And since it belongs to the Lord, he said, I'll build my church. And if it's my church, the gates of hell should not prevail. It didn't say it wouldn't rise. It didn't say it wouldn't shoot. It didn't say it wouldn't aim. But it did say it would not prevail against it. It belongs to the Lord. Amen. You should take off your shoes. You stand on the ground. He said, Boy, I got a job for you to do. I, I, I want you to go now and I want you to recognize that my job, my calling, ain't for you. Kind of get it when it's in here. It, it, it's for God's people. Kind of get it when it's in here. And, 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 and I don't mean, I don't mean, I don't mean to bother nobody here, but thank God, Bishop, amen, they, that's the problem with some of us bishops and preachers today, kind of get a witness in here, that we think the calling is about us, kind of, kind of, kind of get a witness in here, God, God ain't called us for us, amen, he called us because there are some people in the wilderness, there are some people in bondage, and he called us so that we can minister can I get a witness in here? That, that, that's why you got the word pulpit. Can I get a witness in here? But now we're living in this millennium day now where we have changed the pulpit to a place for public performance. Can I get a witness in here? Hey Amen. We've changed the pulpit for a place of show off. We have changed the pulpit for a Sunday night disco club. We have changed to show up who we are and what we have. We are changed in the cross for cars, cash, and clothes. Yeah. But, but I stop by tell you, amen, see the Grove, amen, you've been known for your rich history because you had preachers who realized the value of preaching from the pulpit. Can I get a witness in here? Why? Because what is the pulpit? If you look at it and break it down, it says poor pit. Can I get a witness in here? Poor pit. That means that the pulpit job is designed to pull men, women, boys, and girls from the pits of sin, hell, and despair. Can I get a witness in here? And so he called Moses. He said, Moses, I want you to go down there 
there and I want you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. I get a witness in here. And Moses said to him, Lord, I, 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 I'm going to go. And he had a stuttering problem. Moses, yeah, if you did research on Moses, yeah. Moses had a dialect with his tongue. Yeah. Can I get a witness in here? And, and, and he said, he said, God, I, I, I know you want me, 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 me to go, but what, 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 what must I, who must I, 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 I say, sick me? Amen. God said, Moses, you don't got to give them my resume. Just tell Pharaoh, I am that I am. Can I get it with a second? Yeah. And that's a good place to preach right there. Because when you're on the battlefield for the Lord, when you're going against your Pharaoh, when you're going against your giant, when you're going against your enemies, and they will try to question who assigned you, who called you, who sent you, just lift your head up and look them right in the face and tell them, I am sent me. Can I get a witness of here? And you don't need you don't need to tell nobody about God's resume because it'll take all day, all night long, all year long to tell somebody else's resume. Just tell them, I am sent you. And you can run in everything else. I am bread when you're hungry. I am water when you're first out. I am Jehovah Jireh. I'm your battle axe. I'm your refuge. I'm your shelter. I'm your friend. I'm your battle axe. I'm your prepared. I am sent me. Can I get a little look at somebody and tell them, he is who he is. Can I get a little sit here? He is who he is. He, he don't need no assistance being God. He's God by himself. He, he's a whole child. He's a whole to stick it through. He's a whole to fear. He's a whole He's a whore to stick in the God is who he is. Let me, let, me, let me hurry up here and rush on here. Can I get a witness in here? He, he said here, he said he sent them to tell Pharaoh to let his people go. Amen. They went over and God and God raised up Moses to take Israel. Amen. Out of bondage. And then across. The Red Sea. Yeah. Y'all know the story, don't you? Yeah. Amen. They went across the Red Sea. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says that God does something yes. unusual. Yes. I, I like the text here. Yeah. God said they walked across yeah. on dry ground. Yeah. Y'all gonna help me preach it. Yeah. Now, if you do any research, scientists will teach you. That whenever water hits dirt, amen, it turns into money. But the text says they didn't walk across on mud. Because if they walked across on mud, they would have been, it would have been slippery. Pharaoh and his army could have easily captured them. So what God did was God built cement. Right in your midst. 
kind of getting what it's in here. Why are we so busy looking across the world for the answer? Sometimes the answer is right here on the unknown. Use what you have. Can I get a witness in here? Look at somebody and tell them I come to church every Sunday to use what I have. Can I get a witness in here? I come to church to use my song. I come to church to use my prayer. I come to church to use my name. You what you got? The Bible says you come across Mary and them just singing. Watch this. But now she's gone from singing to complaining. Amen. Because they found themselves in waters that were better. Can I get a witness in here? I'm, I'm getting ready to close here. Amen. They, they come across the Red Sea. Now they're complaining. Why? Because the waters were better. The waters were simply better because God was trying to test them. Why? Because an enemy by the name was Amalek. I'm rushing on so we can get out of here. Amen. Give me about five more minutes and I'm close. <laughs> An enemy by the name of Amalek was waiting on them. Y'all, y'all, y'all help me do some Bible talk here. And, and the children of Israel were inexperienced with war, so they could not handle that enemy called the Amalek. So God had to take them the long way around. Can I get a witness in here? Why? Because he wanted to prepare them for the journey and for the battle. Can I get a witness in here? There are some enemies in our life that we can't handle. So sometimes God has to give us free while. Because while you was taking it a long way around, you were teaching me how to trust in God. While you was taking me the long way around, you were rebuilding my faith. You were, and you were strengthening my character. You were fortifying my faith. Why you were taking me the long way around? Since I've been able to go a long way around, I'm able to stand the day and say I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. Yes, I've had some weary days and some lonely nights. But when I look around and think things over, all of my good days, I outweigh my bad days. And I won't complain. Why? Because the Lord has been good to me. Is there anybody here that can look at your neighbor in the face? If you don't mind, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, I'm you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've had some ups, I've had some downs, I've had some good days, I've had some long days, but the
that can and will. Spirit of God is in this place. I say the Spirit of God is in this place. If you can, if you can, just lift your hand with me. If you can, just lift your hand with me. And stretch it forth over here towards the office. Towards our preacher. Lord, we thank you for using your servant today. Lord, we thank you. Ah, bless your name, God. Thank you for using your servant. Thank you for giving the word for us. Even in this time, Father, thank you for giving us a word of encouragement, a word of strength, a word for right now. Build him back up, we pray. All that he spent out as he, you used him. As your anointing saturated his heart, mind, and spirit and mouth. Restore back to him now. As he poured out. The so we're back in and we pray. Thank you for using your servant today. As your hands are yet elevated. Father God, with these hands that are lifted tonight. We thank you for the word that was preached. Even as your word was proclaimed tonight. Father God, if there is one of these hands that is lifted, that is in a place of decision, that have not given themselves totally and completely to you, even as their hands are even elevated now, I pray, Father God, that your spirit will convict them. Lord, with a word preached as powerful as this, that your word will convict them. Don't let them leave out of this house the same. But Lord, as we give the invitation even now, that that compulsion will allow them to rise and to come and to receive you as Lord and Savior of their lives. Do it now, God. Simple invitation. If you know that if God was to come back right now, I'm not going to put nobody on Front Street that way. I'm going to just say it this way. If you know that there's anything that would hinder you from going to meet him in the air, meet me right down here in front of the altar. That's what the preaching, that's what the worship we in celebration, but that's what we come to church for. That's what it's all about. We all had to come. Can I get a witness? I said we all had to come. Can I get a witness? There's one today. We have a need to come. Since he wants to be Lord, he wants to be Savior of your life. He wants to be Lord, he wants to be Savior of your life. Why don't you let him? Even now, why don't you let him? Hallelujah to your name. Father God, we have been obedient. Your word has spoken for itself. Father, if there's one in the valley of the city, it's teetering and tiring, yet with the perspective of giving their life to you. We pray that they be displaced, but don't let them, oh God, leave the perspective. I pray that you trust them. Trouble their heart, trouble their spirit, trouble their mind. Give them to know that they must say yes to you. Lord, the last thing too late. We have discharged the duty of the church, yet there is room. There's red room in God's kingdom for more. Amen. And amen. Did you enjoy the message today? Put your hands together for that message. Come on, put your hands together for that word tonight. Put your hands together for that word tonight. Hallelujah. Uh, Sister Marie, our musician, our deacons, amen. All of our members who are here, thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much for the pastor. Really appreciate you for coming. Amen. Um, amen. Listen, Sid Rowe, if you're not busy, 
if you're not busy Wednesday through Friday, uh, we have revival in St. Rich Friendship, 709 West Manchester Avenue, starting at 7 o'clock, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Pastor George Coward will be our evangelist, awesome preacher. Amen. And if you're not busy, amen, please stop by. Amen. Invite somebody to come. Amen. We we'll hope to look forward to seeing you. Um, refreshments. Yes. Amen. Refreshments in the fellowship hall. Amen. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May he make his face shine upon thee and be gracious. May the Lord lift up his countenance and give thee peace. In Jesus' name. And all of God's people say, Amen. amen. amen.